longtime survivor of suicide. Um, it was my 19-year-old niece, and she, she died by suicide at age 19. And a month after that, I lost my 27-year-old best friend for accidental suicide. But before those two stories came along, I tried in 2004. I was in a very unhappy, unhappy and unhealthy marriage that it was it started way too young we were just way too young but it escalated to a point where I didn't want to live anymore I tried to take my own life at that time that I actually almost came very very close it took no more than five seconds to realize I knew I made a mistake and within those five seconds, I literally heard my children at that time, when there were kids, there were little babies, I heard them crying, they were nowhere around. So I believe if I didn't hear their cries, I probably would have already have not been here today. So I did get myself some help in patient care. I was gone for about two weeks. And within that time being, I had to find who I was. It still took several months before I actually got the help I needed and to move on and separate from my ex-husband. It was an everyday struggle just to have that dark cloud. People ask me, why? Why did you do that? You had kids. You're selfish. And don't you think about anybody else? I'm like, when you're in that dark tunnel, you do block out everybody because your pain is so strong, you feel like a burden on everybody else. Your kids are better off, your loved ones are better off without you. But I didn't think about anybody else. And it may call it selfish, I call it, you know what, trying to heal my own pain in one way or another. Yeah, a saying goes of your, your loved ones may be gone, but their pain just starts right after. But the thing is, it's like, Nobody knows until you're in their shoes. And especially coming from a Native American reservation, it's a taboo to talk about it. But at this point, nobody talks about it. So why not talk about it? I am redeemed.